As I mentioned in the intro, the unique features section is going to be fairly short. There are only a couple things that we really need to show in detail. If you look here at the back of the aircraft, there's a small cone that's going to tie both of the elevators together. Over here, we're going to go over how to assemble the belly skin and how to do the install. Beyond that, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to make your build go much easier. Let's get started. To tie the two elevators together, locate the part labeled C10. We're going to peel paper off of one side, and I'm going to add a bevel to both of the edges. Once I've added my bevel, I'm going to add some shape, and we're going to roll our part up. I'm going to leave it rolled up like this for a couple minutes. This will help it hold its shape when we go to glue the two edges together. Once the skin's had a chance to take its shape, I'm going to lay a piece of tape across one edge. I'm going to run a bead of glue along one of the edges. Bring those two edges together and push my tape across. Now you'll notice that I've kind of got a teardrop shape. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take and push it straight down, and I'm going to hold it like this while the glue cools. Give that a couple minutes, then we'll inspect our seam and possibly add some more glue as needed. So when I flip it over, I see I've got a little bit of a gap here. What I'm going to do is simply pull my tape back. I'm going to push a little bit more glue down into that seam. And I'm going to push the two edges together and wrap my tape. Get a little bit more tape down here on the edge. Bring those together, wrap it, and just like before, press it down so it doesn't have that teardrop shape. Now that the glue's cooled down, I'm going to check to see if I need to add a little bit more glue. Looks like I could put a little bit more glue inside that channel. I think that'll make it hold just a little bit better. Now that the glue's had a chance to cool, let's test fit our cone. I'm going to line up my registration mark there in the center to the back of the vertical stabilizer, and I'm going to bring the two trailing edges of the elevator down. Looks like I need to cut a little bit of a bevel on either side. You can see I'm not taking very much material. That should get it. I'm going to check my fit again. All right, that comes down nicely. I want to make sure they're even on both sides, and we're going to glue things in place. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm going to flip the assembly over. All right, looking at it from the underside, I'm making sure that the elevators are even with one another. I'm making sure that my seam is lined up right down the middle, and you can see that the cone is pushed all the way up against the tail section. Once that's done, I'm going to add a bead of glue on either side. And I couldn't quite go all the way because my thumb's in the way. That's okay. Once the glue cools down, I'll go ahead and run a complete bead all the way down the seam. Once that's done, I'll flip it over and do the same on the top side. We're going to let that cool for a minute and a half or so, and then we're going to cut a relief. Once the glue's cooled down, we're going to take and remove a sliver of material off the cone. We want to make sure that our elevator is free to go up and down. Now you can see we've got, now you can see that the elevator will travel downward without binding up. I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the other side. On the top, I barely have to remove anything. All right, we're all set. Let's take a quick look at the engine nacelles. Before I get started talking about the nacelles, 
I want to point out that the flight test mosquito is going to come a couple different ways. If you buy it as a value pack, the value pack will include flight test budget B motors. The budget B motors are slightly longer than the classic flight test B motors. Any flight test mosquito kit that comes with the budget B motors will be made slightly differently. They can easily be identified by looking at the power pod. If you look closely right here, on the right hand side, it will say RN1. And you'll notice that there's gonna be a small arrow. I've done a cutaway so you can see this more clearly. If we take a look at the front of our engine nacelle, you'll notice that our firewall is set back about a quarter inch from the leading edge of the foam. In order to make sure that the firewall is in the correct position, we've added this line. You can also see it on the other one, but it's obscured by glue. So I wanna use this cutaway to show you how to get position. When you're sliding the power pod in, you're gonna line up this line with the back edge of the F2 former. Once it's lined up, you can glue it in place. Now, the power pod is glued in place after the skin has been added. I'm simply showing you a cutaway for clarification. If you're installing the regular flight test B motors, you can disregard everything said here in the unique features section and simply watch the miscellaneous video in the playlist. Once your power pod has been installed, you'll notice that I've put a heavy bead of glue between the edge of the firewall and the skin. I've done this all the way around the circumference of the firewall. Once you've finished out your engine nacelle, the installation of the nacelle onto the wing assembly is also covered in the miscellaneous section. Now that that's done, I wanna take a couple moments and talk about the midsection of the fuselage. Normally on Master Series aircraft, this midsection is one piece. On the Mosquito, it consists of three pieces. You've got C7, C6, and C5. I'm not gonna show how the assembly is done. The symbol mapping will explain how each piece goes together. That said, I'm gonna flip it over and spend a couple minutes and just talk about the assembly process. While there are a couple different ways this midsection can go together, I have it symbol mapped in the recommended way. Starting up here with the skin labeled C5, you're gonna see a circle and a star. Of course, anytime you see a star, that tells us that's the part that we start with. Anytime you see a circle, that tells us this is going to be a closed shape. So you can see where I've got a glue seam right here covered with tape. Once I complete C5, it's going to tell us to insert this former F2. It's actually the F2B former. And you'll notice that it's a flush fit. On the C5 skin, it's going to say flush fit along this edge. The reason it's flush fit is because the nose is gonna be removable. And so we're gonna bring two formers together. That's gonna to give us access to the battery box. Anytime you see these circles with a hashtag, we know that we're gonna be installing magnets. The magnets will keep the nose in place during flight. Once we've installed the F2B former, we're also going to install the F3 former. Once this assembly that consists of the F2B, the C5 skin, and the F3 former, once those are done, I'm gonna move backwards, and then I'm going to install this C7 skin. All the instructions are written on the underside with our symbol mapping. You will see that the C7 skin will attach to the F5 former at the 12 o'clock position. Once we've installed the C7 skin using the glue and wrap method, we'll make our way forward. We will then attach the C7 skin to the F4 former. Once we've installed the F4 former, we will install the C6A skin to the F4 former. The reason we have an A on the C6 skin is there's also going to be a C6B. A's go on top, B's go on the bottom. Once we've installed the C6A skin and attached to the F4 former, we're going to be attaching the skin to this assembly we started with. Once this midsection is complete, you can go ahead and install your battery box and your wing assembly. If you need additional instructions for installing the battery box, that is covered in the playlist in the midsection video. Before we move on to the belly skin, there are a couple things that I do wanna point out. I've got my wing installed. You can see that I've run a bead of glue right here. And if you look down inside, 
I've tied the wing in a little bit more here. And if we look here at the back, you can see I've got my push rod housing cut off about an inch from where it comes through the former. One thing I do want to point out is when installing your servo, go ahead and feed your wire through the push rod housing. And we're simply going to glue our servo right here in the middle. Make sure you scratch the underside of the servo so that the glue will adhere better. Once we've got the servo installed, let's go ahead and install the belly skin. Now we can move on to the belly skin. To do the belly skin, we're first going to remove the scrap out of the center of each of these long pieces using the back side of a razor blade. I'm going to go down each of the scores. Once I've gone down the scores, I'm going to break it open and I'm going to tear away the scrap. Our symbol mapping tells us to do a C fold, so I'm going to run a bead of glue right down the center and run a bead of glue on one side or the other and we'll fold it over on itself. Hold that in place for about 30 seconds and repeat the process on the other one. Once your rails are done, go ahead and remove paper from the skin labeled 6CB. Once we've got the shape added to the skin, let's go ahead and cut our rails to length. You can see that I've got my rail butted up to the former. If we look up front here, I'm going to cut the rail right in front of the former. I want to make sure that rail fits right between the two formers. All right, once I got that, I'm going to put a drop of glue on either side of the rail. I'm going to drop it in place. Now if you look closely, you'll notice that my rail is not sticking out past the edge of the former. I want to make sure that corner stays back on the inside of that edge. Next I'm going to run a bead of glue between the lower wing skin and the rail and we'll repeat the process on the other side. Give the glue a minute to cool, then we're going to test fit our belly skin. Looks like I need to cut off a little less than an eighth of an inch. I intentionally run this part slightly oversized. You're always going to get a little bit of variation when doing assembly. Air fit front to back looks good. Looks like I'm a little bit too wide though. Before I start cutting a strip away, I'm first going to add a bevel down each of the edges. Okay, that side looks good, but if I flip the assembly around the other way, You'll see that it's still just a touch too long. I'll try cutting a bevel, but I think I'm going to have to take a little sliver of material off. Yeah, that actually might just work. Looks like it'll work in the front, but I think I am going to have to take a little bit of a sliver off that side. In order to remove material, go ahead and grab a steel ruler. This will really help cutting a straight line. So here at the front, I'm not going to remove anything. My fit looks really good. But as you go towards the back, you can see that I'm going to remove about a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to hold my razor blade at a little bit of an angle, so when I cut, I'll also create a bevel. Alright, let's 
test it again. Okay, I'm squeezing around the former on both ends and it looks like it's just making contact with the lower wing skin. I think we're in good shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on one side or the other. It doesn't matter which side you start with. I want to make sure that I've got the skin pushed all the way down to the lower wing skin. I'm going to make contact. Okay, that looks good. Now that our test fit looks good, I'm going to run a heavy bead of glue right along the rail. I'm going to drop my skin in place. Skin's going to make contact with the lower wing skin, and I'm going to keep it against that rail while the glue cools. One thing to note, you will want to make sure all your aileron and your elevator wires are pushed through the front of the aircraft prior to closing the lower wing skin. Now I'm going to work my way around the formers. I'm going to run glue to the midway point, both front and back. And we're going to hold it in place until the glue cools. Once the glue's had a chance to cool, run a little bit of glue along the front and back former. You don't have to go all the way up. What you will want to do is run a heavy bead of glue all the way along the rail. It's going to be a little tricky to film this. And using a ruler, you can break it over until it makes contact with the lower wing skin. Using a ruler helps distribute the pressure very evenly as the glue is cooling down. Be sure and hold that in place for a full two and a half minutes before removing pressure. I also like running a bead of glue here on the outside. That'll tie things together really nicely. One last thing that I'd like to make mention of is you'll notice on the F1 former, we have this cut symbol. Anytime you see this cut symbol, you're going to assemble the part and then cut it after everything's glued together. So you can see I've got my finished nose here. What I do is you can see where I've gone in with an X-Acto knife after everything's been assembled, and I simply cut around the dotted line and then remove the scrap. This is really helpful for ensuring your nose comes out the correct shape. As I mentioned in the intro, this is a very fun and exciting build. I can't wait to start seeing these in the wild. Good luck.